All right, guys, you asked for it, you got it. I've been having a lot of you ask me to do something besides countertops. We're gonna take this old uh, coffee table that we literally just got out of storage and we're going to make it beautiful. So stick around and let me know what you think. Okay, so this table is in pretty bad shape. Uh, it's got some pretty good cracks in it. Uh, the top is very wavy and unlevel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna sand it down a little bit and then get it prepped for a texture medium that I'm gonna put on top of this, which is a faux finishing product I've used in my business. And we're gonna do a really cool finish. Okay, the table is prepped and ready to go. What we're gonna do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to trial on a product. It's a texture medium. I get the texture medium from uh, Artistic Painting Studio. Uh, I will have a link in the descriptions of this video to show you where I get all of these products. So we're gonna be coming in with a texture medium. It's a very high-end professional texture medium that's gonna be very, very strong and durable. Then we're gonna come in with a crocodile roller. It's got a crocodile um, pattern on it. Actually gonna be using two of those, a big one and a smaller one. It's gonna give us just a little bit of a unique finish. Now, if you don't have rollers uh, or you don't wanna purchase rollers, you can also use a stencil. These are also sold on uh, the Artistic Painting Studio website. And I love these stencils, they are amazing. You can really do a lot of cool projects that you can't really do with a roller. First of all, we wanna start pouring, uh, putting some of the texture medium down onto the surface. I'm using a Japanese trial. These are the best trials that I've found. They're really easy to handle and easy to work with. They have a little bit of flexibility in them. If you try to use a really stiff trial, it's really hard to get the material to lay out. All right, so thin winds. So you want that material to be laid on very thin. All you're trying to do is to get an impression left by your roller um, in order for the next step, which is painting and glazing, all of that to be able to kind of get in the highs and lows. So you don't need a lot of product. All right, as you start trialing and laying down the material, sometimes it gets a little dry. So all I have in this bottle is water and it's at a very, very fine mist bottle. So if I kind of wet my surface, it just kind of helps the material lay down a little bit. Okay, so I have the texture medium over the entire surface. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. And also you have plenty of working time with this product. Uh, it's a great product. And if I make a mistake, you'll see, I can go right back over the top. All right, so here we're gonna come in first with our large crock roller. All right, so when you roll, you just wanna put nice even pressure and just roll it right down the middle. All right, so what I really like about this product also is let's say that I didn't like this. All I have to do, get my trial and trial right back over the top of it. And we can do it again. All right, so now we have all of the design on the top. And because there's areas of really thick uh, texture medium and some really thin, I'm gonna have highs and lows where that texture medium kind of peaked. So what I wanna do so I don't have to really sand a lot and also I don't have uh, really high points is I'm gonna do a knockdown. And all I'll do, I'm gonna take my trial and I'm very lightly gonna knock down 
some of these peaks and this also gives it a really cool effect and it makes it look a little bit more natural kind of a more of a skin look I'm literally just putting the weight of the trial on there now this middle I don't really have to worry about that it was a different type of roller and it didn't really pick up a lot of that product. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry for just a second. I'm gonna go clean my rollers and then I'm gonna come back and address my edges. Okay, so for my edges, I decided to try just using my hand instead of trying to trial that onto such a thin edge and it's working actually really good. So once I get it on, I'm just gonna come with my hand it does not have to be smooth. This will actually give me a really cool organic look. The neat thing about this product is this exact same technique can be used on a countertop um, or any kind of piece of furniture that you want to do. If you have a countertop that maybe doesn't have a, a, a perfect surface, you could come do a product like this or a finish like this and in no time, have a very, very high-end countertop finish. Wow, I really like that. Actually, if you wanted to, you wouldn't even have to run your roller. That's really a cool look, but I ain't gonna run my roller over that. All right, so I wanna stay true to the pattern, so I'm gonna run it lengthwise. Now, even though I have some slides, that really does look cool. And I'm actually gonna bring my hand back over the top of it a little bit to give it a more organic look. There, perfect. All of these little areas right here, I'm not worried about at all. Once we sand and we paint, you won't be able to see any of those. Now for my ends, I'm going to be coming the same direction, so this time I'm going to run down with my roller. Alright, so everything's done. We're going to let this product dry for about four hours, kind of depending again on your temperature, uh, how long that'll take. You want it hard enough that when you sand it, it doesn't gum up your sander. Like I said, about four hours. All right, so I have a lot of people when I used to do this for a living, do faux finishing and repainting and upscaling furniture, ask me, can I use wall mud, uh, what you use when you do sheetrock? Technically, the technique would work, but I'm gonna really uh, kind of highly discourage you from using wall mud. What happens when wall mud dries, it shrinks and it cracks and it's not durable at all. The product that I'm using is very, very, very durable. You don't have to even put epoxy over the top of it. Uh, if you were to leave it uh, without the epoxy and you drop something on it, it would be super, super tough. So stick with the good products, put your time and effort into quality products and you'll have a quality project. Okay, so everything has been sanded. I sanded it enough to where you can still feel a little bit of the pattern but it's not really deep. If you keep it really deep, just remember that's more product that's gonna have to go into those lows so that you have a really smooth surface. So sand it down and uh, leave just enough to where you can feel the pattern. All right, so I wanna draw your attention to something. Uh, you see this a lot when you do uh, uh, restore painted, painted furniture or any kind of furniture that has maybe a wood top that you're going over. Um, a lot of times we don't always know what products were on the surface and you'll get what we call bleed through, which is what's happening here. So it looks like there was like some kind of stain or uh, tannin from the wood that has bled through and come through the surface. You won't see it everywhere, but a lot of times you will get a bleed through. You'll see this a lot when you're redoing and repainting furniture. So what you're gonna need to do 
uh, if you were gonna paint this a light color, in our case, we're painting it black, I'm not worried about it, but if you were gonna be doing this in a, a light color, you're gonna wanna paint this first with a stain blocking type of a uh, uh, primer. The best thing to do before you even put your uh, texture medium down, if you don't know what's on the surface of the wood, is to go ahead and do a stain blocking primer first. That way you can avoid this. A really good stain blocking um, primer to use is a shellac based uh, primer. I like to use those a lot. And then you don't have to worry about this bleed through. But like I said, we're gonna be doing black, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so before we head to the next step, I want to prep my area so that I don't have any uh, epoxy and paint to get on my legs. All right, so we're going to uh, put some plastic sheeting around here uh, so we don't get product on my table. So this is the best way that I felt to prep um, and make it so that your plastic will really have good adhesion and you won't have any leaks. If you'll tape first your edge, And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put our plastic and tape onto this. That way you're gonna have really good uh, seal and your plastic is going to stay a lot easier. You'll also do this if you're prepping countertops uh, to protect your lower cabinets. All right, so now that we have our tape all the way around, we're gonna bring up our plastic and now we're gonna tape our plastic on to the taped area and get a really good seal. And tape around. So if you have a seam in your plastic, make sure that you have that seam stop in the middle. You don't ever wanna have a seam on a leg because for one, epoxy is gonna find a way to slip through there and get your legs. So make sure that you have one continual piece going around the leg. I do have uh, two videos on how to prep and we'll link those in the video description below. Okay, for the next step, we're going to paint this a base color. Now I'm using the Stone Coat Countertop undercoating and uh, because I wanna be able to pour uh, my epoxy or go to the next step within the next four hours. If you use a latex paint from a big box store, which is perfectly fine, you're gonna want to wait at least 24 hours before you go to the next step. And the reason you do that is because you need to make sure that that paint has enough time to off gas and doesn't cause uh, some issues with your epoxy. Uh, when you don't allow the paint to off gas properly, a lot of times it'll cause your epoxy to either have micro bubbles or be very cloudy. With the uh, undercoating, I can pour in four hours. A little pro tip here for you guys. If you will keep a roller in your paint can, you'll never have to go looking for a roller. All right, we're gonna do two thin coats and you wanna do them thin. And you're gonna slightly, or lightly, I should say, sand between the coats. Now, because this is a textured finish, I wanna go both directions to make sure that I get full coverage. You can see how just by putting a coat of paint and color really makes this pattern pop out. It's real important that when you are painting anything with a texture that you move around and you look in the light because you'll see areas that you missed uh, as you move around. And you, want, you don't wanna miss any and find out when you're ready to do the next step. All right, 
So we will let this coat dry about an hour. I'll come back, I'll put uh, the second coat and then I'll let it dry for about four hours and we'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, so the paint is dry and we're gonna apply the foil adhesive. So do you see where I'm going with this project? I'm gonna grab some really cool foils. All right, so one thing I really like about this foil adhesive is that once it sets up to a tack, I can wait as long as I want to go to the next step. I don't have to apply my foil at any given time. So if I wanna do this one day and then come back the next day and apply the foils, I can do that. I'm not on a really tight time schedule. And one coat of this glue will definitely do you. So after I get it on, I'll go back very lightly and I'll roll out my uh, roller marks to get a really smooth finish. If you don't want to apply a foil, if you wanna do this finish without applying a foil, absolutely you can do this. You would basically just skip this step and you would go to the next step, which is going to be applying the um, glazing material. So if you don't want to do the uh, foil, you can skip. Now, we're gonna be using a black glazing material. So obviously, if you have a black background, you're not gonna wanna use a black glaze. So you may want to use a different color background if you're gonna skip your foils and go straight into the glaze. This would be really pretty. And I've done it several times where instead of painting it black, I paint it copper. Then I skip the foils and I go straight in with a black glaze and it is absolutely stunning. So I like putting the foils. It gives such a, a neat uh, depth to the finish, but you certainly don't have to do that. where my two seams come together. I just kind of roll it out there so I don't have a hard line. Okay, so we'll let this dry for about 45 minutes and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. So be careful, uh, just like when you're painting, make sure you look at it from all angles and make sure that you have 100% coverage if you want 100% coverage. Now, a really cool thing that you could do is come and just do like a skim coat of your adhesive. Then when you put the foil down, the foil's only gonna grab where that adhesive is. That's really a cool finish as well. But we've got 100% coverage here and I can't wait to go to the next step. All right, so see you in 45 minutes. All right, the glue has set up to attack and now we can go to the next step. But this is the way that you can tell if your glue is ready. I can touch it and it'll actually make a popping sound. And then when I pull my finger off, it's clean to the touch. So that's how I know it's time to go to the next step. All right, so I'm gonna go and use a solid color foil. This is a bronze color. And I'm also not going to do 100% coverage. I want this foil to only hit the high points of this design. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crunch it up. Now the reason I do that is because one, it gives the foil a little bit of body and it's a little easier to handle. 
Also, it gives a really cool effect. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna lay it down. Kind of how, see where I want it to go. I'm kind of go to the edge. Now you wanna make sure that when you put this foil down, you put ugly side down, okay? You want the shiny part up. Very lightly. I'm just gonna very lightly tap that just to hold it. Then I'm gonna stretch this out. So very lightly, I'm gonna come with a cloth and I'm gonna rub it so that it sticks. Now this is very important. Because I'm gonna be doing multiple sheets across the surface, I don't want to go all the way to the edge of this piece of foil. If I were to rub it down and make it stick, there would be a line and I don't want that. I want to have a very soft edge. All right, so I'm gonna check it. Okay, that's very pretty but I do want a little bit more coverage than that. So I'm gonna put it back down and you can either decide to rub harder with your rag Oh yeah, that's pretty. Or you can actually come over with your brush Now, you don't want to do this if you go in a circle, that circle pattern may transpose down into your foil. All right, wow. That's really, really pretty. I'm gonna go right here. Okay, now see how this edge is very soft. I don't have a distinct line right there. So what I can do is I can go, now I can take my foil, and you, you can see I still have a lot of the foil on the plastic. So I'm gonna actually use this over again, and I'm gonna overlap my seam this time by about, oh, an inch or so. I'm gonna move it down a little bit because I did use quite a bit of that edge. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I'm having to scrub a little bit more on this piece because I've already had some of the foil uh, come off over here. So I'm just gonna rub a little harder. Oh, that's so pretty. Now you can see how this just makes one pretty piece. You can't see where your lines are. And some areas have heavier foil than others, and that's what gives it a very realistic look. All right, so we'll just continue that until the whole surface is covered. This is very pretty. Okay, so once you have a foil touch the adhesive and it comes off the back, wherever that foil is on your surface is no longer going to have a sticky feeling because now the foil is over the adhesive. But because I didn't give 100% coverage and I have that some of the glue is still kind of coming through, it's gonna have a tacky appearance appearance or feel it'll feel real tacky so all i have to do is once i lay down my next step which is going to be glaze all that stickiness will go away all right so i'm debating now can y'all see my wheels thinking whether to go over the top of this now with a different color foil maybe a gold foil and then that gold foil because there's just a little bit of that glue left will kind of hit in certain areas and we may get a little bit of a highlight of gold. So let me know what you would do. 
put that in the comments below if you don't mind. I'll be back and I'll surprise you with what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's the decision. Decided to go with a little bit of a gold. Now I didn't have a whole roll of the gold that I really wanted to use, but I did have a roll of gold and the gold has a pattern. But I'm not really worried about that pattern showing up because I'm just gonna barely rub and barely put any of that gold on here. Now this is a beautiful pattern. It makes a gorgeous table, but I don't necessarily want roses, but I'm gonna lay it down and very, very softly, I'm gonna rub so that I just have a little bit of that gold shining through. See, there's just a tiny bit of it. I just want it to kind of peekaboo through on some of my areas. I don't want it to be over the entire surface. Remember, it's only gonna stick where there's still adhesive left. Now, let me show you another trick you can do. You can take this foil, roll it so that you have the, the dirty side, and you can pounce. And then that pouncing is also going just to release where there's sticky adhesive left. You can always go back, lay it out. As long as you have foil, or as long as you have a pattern on that plastic, you can keep going back and using it. There we go. Now, I'm gonna put a glaze over this. So I'm gonna knock down a lot of that real vibrant gold. That's not the look I'm going for. But when that glaze goes over the top, it's gonna allow, allow that gold to shine through, but it won't be really, really brassy and really, really shiny. You can see where I'm starting to run out of, of uh, foil. So I wanna make sure I use another piece or another area. I absolutely love the two colors of foil. It really gave a lot of depth to the pattern. Okay, so now it's time to put a glaze. And the reason we're gonna put a glaze is because this is very bright and I don't want it to be super bright. I want the glaze to add another layer of depth. If you don't have a glaze or you don't wanna use a glaze, you can definitely skip this part. The glaze that I'm using is a very easy glaze to get a hold of. I got it at Lowe's. It's just a decorative glaze and it's in Java Brown. Now my favorite glaze to use is a product by General Finishes. I love their pre-made glazes. They're absolutely gorgeous. But you can make a glaze out of just about anything. You can get glazing medium, add your own paint, and make your own glaze. But for this project, we're going with a pre-made glaze from Lowe's. I just have a very cheap little foam brush and I'm using shop towels. Now, I really like to use cheesecloth. It's actually a little easier to pull off the product, but if you don't have cheesecloth, this will work, even a regular paper towel. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna come on here and we're gonna start laying that glaze down. And I'm going both directions so that I make sure to get all in side of the crevices. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna pull that glaze off. Now this is where it's up to you to decide how much 
of that glaze that you want to pull off and you'll see that all it's really doing is kind of knocking that really bright gold down now you could also come in here with the colors that i used you can come in here with a black glaze and it would really be pretty and you know what i think i'm going to actually go get my black glaze put it down and let's see what we like better so i'll be right back okay so I'm gonna come back over here with black in a little bitty area and see if I like the black better. Uh, because glaze has a long open time, I can wipe it down with a cloth that's got just a little bit of water on it and I can pull my glaze off. So this is the glaze I was telling you guys about. It's the General Finishes. Love, love, love their glazes. And this one is just in black. So let's see what the black does. All right, so the black's definitely going to give me a little bit more depth. And I'm going to come back over. Oh, I really like the black, guys. I think I'm going to, yep, I think I'm going to go with the black because it really does give a great finish. Look at the difference. This is the brown. This is the black, and this is nothing. See how it's really, really bright, and it's toned it down, but you can still see those accents. And I think with the legs that are on this table, I think the black's gonna be the way to go. All right, so that's what we'll do. I'm just gonna come right back over the top where I had the brown and put the black. Love, love, love. And the problem is I'm gonna do this table and I'm gonna to wanna to keep it for myself. Now, you'll notice that I'm not doing a really large area at one time because I wanna keep a wet edge. And by doing small areas at a time, you're not gonna be able to see where I'm starting and where I'm starting. Also, you'll notice when I go back to add my glaze, I don't start adding my glaze right where I stopped my glaze. I come over and then I work it back up into that area so that I have a very soft edge. Now, if you wanna pull pull more of that glaze off. If you don't want that black to be so heavy, all you have to do is take a wet uh, spray bottle, mist your rag, and then pull it or rub it on the top and it'll pull a little bit more of that glaze off. If you want a little bit more of that finished and like I said, you have quite a bit of uh, working time when you're using glazes. So I can even go back where I put it on when I first started and still pull a little bit of that off. I like these foam brushes because they hold quite a bit of product. And I don't have to dip back into my can as much. Okay, holy mackerel. This is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now it's really important that you also step back and look at your work from a distance because you'll be able to see maybe areas that you missed or maybe some glaze that needs to be pulled off just a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna give you a pro tip. This is pretty, um, I guess, what's the word, um, uh, uniform across the whole table. So now what I like to do to kind of give it a worn look maybe is to hit my edges now with a little more product 
so that my edges almost give that What's that when you do it with photos? Vin vignette mm -hmm. or vin... But it actually mm -hmm. gives a really cool look if you just do your edges and kind of get them darker around the edge. I love to do that. And really, I doubt I even pull any of it off. I'm just kind of using what was left in my brush and doing those edges dark. All right, so see how my edges, I can get to be darker. And if I get them too dark, I just tap it, tap it out. Almost like an old paper in a book, how your edges are really kind of darkened and worn. I love that look. And it's just one more way to make your piece look custom. And you can see I'm not putting a lot. I mean, I haven't even re-dipped my brush in. I'm just kind of using what's on there. All right, guys. I love this. So pretty. All righty. Can you tell I like it? What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below. What colors would you do on this? I have actually done this with red. I painted my base red, came over it with a copper foil, and came over it with black glaze, and it was absolutely stunning. So leave me some comments. All right, so our next step is to let this glaze dry completely because glaze is water-based. It has to be 100% dry before we add our epoxy. All right, so we'll let this dry probably, eh, probably about an hour, and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. All righty, see you then. Okay, guys, don't holler at me, but I'm gonna do one more step before we pour epoxy. And this is going to take your finish to the next level. Now, you absolutely don't have to do this. Uh, it's gonna, it's a very subtle effect. Um, I love it. I do it on a lot of furniture um, and it just kind of brings that depth to a whole new level. All right, so what we're gonna do is called dry brushing. What I've done is I put a little bit of metallic paint on my plate. I happen to be using Modern Masters metallic paint. I love them, but just about any metallic will work. And then I come in with an old chop brush, the older, the better. You don't want a brand new fancy brush. Go get you an old one where all your bristles are messed up. Then you're gonna load your brush a little bit. Don't dip it in there and get a lot of paint on that because all you're gonna do now is offload it and then you're gonna go start dry brushing. You don't want to go from your plate to your project. Make sure you offload, all right? All right, here we go. Now, I want you to look right here, and you'll see right now we don't have, there's none of that bronze metallic. But I'm gonna come in here, and I'm very lightly, I'm not painting, I'm just kind of scuffing. See how I'm bringing in now a little bit of that bronze? And all it's doing is I'm hitting the highs of the texture and it's just gonna give it one more layer of interest. Now, if you have a huge kitchen and you're doing this and you're like, I don't wanna do that whole kitchen like that, then just do a few spots, especially do your edges because it gives it a really cool look. As soon as you see there's no more paint coming off, you just wanna reload, offload, and go back. And it's very subtle, guys. Remember, this is a subtle accent. I'm not sure if the camera is even going to be able to pick up how subtle it is. But if you see it in real life, you can definitely tell. And you can also do this with several colors. We're done. I promise.
we're gonna go to the next step, which is epoxy. So I've mixed up our regular stone coat epoxy at three ounces per square foot. And our regular epoxy is a one-to-one -one ratio. Now we're gonna add a little bit of bling. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add our bronze galaxy, very, very fine glitter. It's very fine and it's gonna float. It's gorgeous. All right, and I'm not gonna do a lot. I don't want this glitter to take over my piece. So I'm literally doing that much and it's really mostly sticking to the stick. You can see it's not coming off. So I'll stir that in there and I'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Very, very. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do this. This is how I cook. I get in trouble doing this. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit. This is about how much I'm gonna add. That's just enough. Just enough to give me just a hint. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of gold dust. Again, you don't have to do that. If you don't want that extra little bling. Little bit of gold dust, that's all I'm gonna put in there. And we'll stir that in and that's gonna be just, woo, so pretty. All right. Okay, so we've let all the glazes and the paint dry and it's time for our first coat of epoxy. All right, so I'm gonna torch it a little bit. It'll be easier for me to use my hands. Now, I don't wanna use a trial on this. I don't wanna risk scratching it. You can use your hand. You could use a foam roller. Um, anything that you want to be able to just spread this out. You guys know me. I love to use my hands. Okay, so because we have texture, you're gonna wanna apply two coats of your epoxy. Plus for durability, that second coat is really gonna bring your durability up. Now in saying that, guys, I've actually done a table, actually it was a bar top, where they wanted texture to show through a little bit through the epoxy. They wanted to be able to feel that slight texture on the top. If that's the case, you could definitely get away with just doing one coat of epoxy. Then you would be able to feel that texture and even I would even probably go about two ounces per square foot instead of three ounces per square foot if you really wanted to uh, feel that texture quite a bit. The epoxy would would give the durability and the shine. Look how much just by pouring the epoxy over this finish how all those colors just pop back up. Now I am gonna be coming over this with the Ultimate Top Coat. Haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do a matte or a gloss. Let me know what you would do in this case. Now I'm gonna also tell you something. If you didn't want to even put epoxy on this top, you could go straight over with UTC. The UTC is such a phenomenal product and has such a great uh, protective properties that you could get away with going straight over this and not have your epoxy. Now, of course, the epoxy is gonna give you a much more durable finish, 
But if this was going to be a piece that wasn't going to see very much traffic, you could get away with not putting epoxy. But to me, the epoxy just makes it what it is. It just brings back all these colors and the depth is amazing. All right. So got everything on there, torch it. Okay guys, what do you think? Holy cow, this is gorgeous. All right, so we'll let this uh, coat of epoxy set for 24 hours. We'll come back, we'll lightly sand, and then we'll pour a final flood coat. All right, see you in 24 hours. Okay guys, this looks amazing. We finished our flood coat, it sat for 24 hours, and we have sanded with 220 sandpaper to get ready for the ultimate top coat. Now it's very important guys that when you sand your top to prepare for the UTC that you sand it with 220 or higher grit. Don't use a low grit because if you put some really deep scratches it's uh, it may show the UTC may allow those those scratches to be uh, kind of go through the, the finish. So make sure you use 220 uh, or higher. Okay so I've prepped my rollers, I've got my UTC ready. I will, uh, I do have a video if you're interested in how to do UTC, either in the high gloss or the matte finish. I will be uh, linking those in the description below for this video. So check that out. We have decided to go with the high gloss or the gloss UTC. I think the gloss on this finish is really gonna be the best thing to do because all of those foils and those metallics and everything will be able to just really shine through. So I'm super excited. All right, so let's get started. When you're doing the UTC, either the gloss or the matte, it's really important that you get plenty of that material onto your surface when you start. You don't wanna get too thin and stingy with that because that's when you back roll if you don't have enough of that product on that surface when you back roll that's when you're going to have lap lines also you don't want to overwork that product too much once you get it on the surface Work it just enough. Also, I always do my surface, my flat, my top surface first. Then I come back and I do my edges because what happens is when you do your edges, sometimes it can leave a uh, little dents in your roller. Just like that, how it did there. Now, once you mix up part A and part B, you are on the clock. You only have about 15 minutes of really good working time. So if you're doing a large area, I highly suggest that you get someone to help you. Someone will have a wet roller and someone will have a dry roller. All right, coming back with my dry roller. Very lightly. I'm not pushing down too much. Getting, ready, getting rid of the hard roller lines that were left by the wet roller. Again, you don't want to over roll it, but you do want to get rid of those hard lines. And then very lightly, I'll go back over. Do my edges. Make sure you do underneath also so you don't have a drip.
Looks good. I don't remember if I did this backside or not. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, so after you roll it out, you're gonna see lap lines while it's wet. Um, so don't try to over roll it and get all those lap lines out. Um, also, it's gonna look very cloudy, but as it dries, it's gonna dry crystal clear. All right, guys, I absolutely love this. I can't wait to show you the finished product. All right, so what we will do, our next step will be, uh, once it's dry, we will come in, I'll flip my table over and I will actually just sand off the drips. And I think I'm gonna leave the legs the color that they are because it's gonna match my house perfectly and I never get to keep anything for myself. So what would you do? What color would you paint these legs? Um, leave me a comment. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait, like I said, to show you the finished product. So give me about 24 hours and I'll let you see it. Okay, guys, it's been 24 hours and the ultimate top coat is dry and looks fabulous. Um, let me know if you'd like to see more projects like this. Uh, leave me a comment. Tell me kind of maybe what you would like to see. Also, sign up for our newsletter on our website, rk3designs.com, because we're going to start doing weekly and monthly promo codes on both our products and our classes. So make sure you sign up for that because you guys will get exclusive promo codes. Also, subscribe to our channel. We're gonna try to hit 50,000 subscribers by mid-year, and I really think we can do it with your support. Uh, click the bell so that every time we post a video or we go live, which is gonna be every Tuesday night here on the YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Central. So join us, we have a lot of fun. So. Until next time, guys, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.